Yeah, this is a willow. It's in the genus Salix, S-A-L-I-X. Not sure what species it is. There's, there's hundreds of species of willow. <clears throat> but it's easy to identify. It's got a, a simple, I mean, a, a simple leaf, and it's long and linear, lanceolate shape. And you can see that it's got two different colors. This is the top of the leaf, and that's the bottom of the leaf. So all willows have got that contrast in the leaf. <clears throat> and, and most of them all have a very linear leaf like this. And then <clears throat> this is how they discovered aspirin is, the Indians would use this as a pain reliever because they would take this and uh, um, just take a, a branch like this and chew it if they had a headache or a toothache or something like that. Because the active ingredient is, of aspirin is, is pres present in the bark of the willow. So you can chew it and it tastes like ch chewing on an aspirin. It doesn't taste real great, but it's effective. I've used it for Marianne many times um, when she, uh, she said, oh, my back is hurting or I have a headache or something. So I just pull over and uh, cut off a willow branch and stick it in your mouth and say, call me in the morning, you know? <laughs> <laughs> now you'd always ask me like 20 minutes yeah. later or half an hour later, how you feeling? Yeah. And I was always, the pain was gone. Yeah. Yeah. It's pseudosilic acid, right? Yeah. That's in it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and that's from, I'm not sure the chemical compounds, but it's, uh, Salicin is found in it, and that's I think the city salicylic acid is found in the salicin, and that's where they get the, the genus Salix from, from salicin. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so all true willows are from the genus Salix. Now, the common names will lead you astray all the time because uh, there's one just at the bottom of the mountain in the desert side here, it's called desert willow, and it's got a long linear leaf. Yeah, but it doesn't have the contrasting color on the other side. And it grows in washes and stuff in the desert. It's a very uh, uh, drought resistant plant, but, and, it's, and it's actually in a totally different family than this too. But, uh, but if you start chewing on the branches of that, it won't, won't hurt you. I mean, the flowers are edible on it and stuff, but, um, but just because it's a willow, they, they call it a, a common name is a willow and uh, has none of the properties of a, a true willow from the genus Salix. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. So you mentioned that the desert willow has a kind of a flower. Does uh -huh. this have a flower? That of willow? course. Yeah, all plants have a flower. I mean, not all plants, but all angiosperms have a flower. Those mm -hmm. are flowering plants. And angiosperms are stuff like you know, roses and, in fact, uh, and willows and grasses and, uh, you know, the yerba santa there, you know, oak trees, all that, all, they all have flowers. The thing is, a lot of the flowers are just so insignificant or so unattractive that, uh, you know, people don't, don't really consider looking at them as for the flower. You have to be a botanist to, okay. to really appreciate the flowers on some of these plants. And uh, the only the only ones that don't have flowers are uh, stuff like ferns uh, that they they grow from spores, not seed, and the gymnosperms, which are the cone-bearing trees like the pine trees and spruces, hemlocks, stuff like that. And uh, so they're cone-bearing trees, the gymnosperms without flowers. So they have male and female cones instead of uh, flowers. Gymnosperms or just angiosperms? Gymnosperms and angiosperms, okay. yeah. <clears throat> but this is the flower of the Yerba Santa. And Yerba Santa, the botanical name is Aerodictin trichocalyx. <clears throat> and uh, this is a really good good plant to know. And you can take it, it's kind of, if you feel it, this doesn't feel as resinous as some of it, but you can feel it and it's kind of sticky, it's very slightly sticky. You know, it's not going to stick to your hands or anything. But when you collect this, I always recommend you bring a paper bag, not a plastic bag, to put it in. 
you put it in a plastic bag, it traps, traps uh, the heat and does not allow air to circulate around it. So the, the leaves will start to stick together, you know, because uh, there is a lot of resin in the leaves. So this is a really good medicinal plant and you can see the flower right here. And sometimes they have a bluish flower. And there are several, there's at least two species that grow in San Bernardino Mountains. Um, Eridicum crassifolia is another one, but this one is by far the most common, the, the trichocalyx. And there's another one that grows in the desert that has a very fuzzy leaf. But one thing they all have in common is, is the medicinal uses and the uh, taste. If you take a, a leaf like that and just stick it between your your cheek and gum, uh, you know, under your cheek on your gums and stuff, it'll start to make you salivate. The Indians would use this to try to ward off thirst, you know, on a long run or walk or hike or whatever they were going on. And uh, <clears throat> but if you take about three to five leaves of this, depends on how the size of the leaves, and put it in a cup of hot water. Um, and then drink the tea and let it steep for about five minutes or so until it tastes good. And it's a delicious tasting tea. If you have the sniffles or any kind of congestion like that, it'll clear it up. I mean, it flat out works. It's so effective that, especially as some people are more sensitive to it than others, but if you take enough of it, you'll get a, a nosebleed. I mean, it'll, it'll just dry up. And it about, takes about 20 minutes is all. You know, it's for it to be, to be effective on me, anyhow. So, use it sparingly, but it won't hurt you or anything. It's just, uh, you know, if you get a nosebleed, then uh, cut back on it, you know. But uh, it tastes it. It's got a unique taste. If you suck on the leaves, it kind of leaves a film on your teeth. But um, it doesn't taste bad. It, you know. So you just put that in hot water and then let yeah. it become your tea? Yeah, and you can take it, you can use it fresh or you can take it home and dry it, you know. And remember, anytime you're trying a new plant, always try just a little bit to make sure your body is fine yeah. with it. So just try a little bit anytime you're trying a new plant. Yeah, just like if you go to a new new country or something like that and you're not used to their food, you know, just don't go chow down, you know. And, on something you've never seen before because it may not agree with you, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe after a little bit of time you can chow down on it, but you might have to get used to it. Your, your system might have to.